It's Martin from The Washboard Resonators and on this week's YouTube video we are going to talk finger picks. So what I hope you get from this video is information to help you if you're a, a newbie with these things. Maybe even you're not a newbie but there's something new. So we've had a few requests recently. I'll get to those in a second and who, or what the people are asking. But basically in this video I'll do two things. I'll talk about the kind of what they do and demonstrate literally how you can play things you probably couldn't play without them and how they affect volume we'll look a little bit at the techniques of that yeah and I will also compare the brands different materials and how they sound different and it should give you the tools to decide if you want to use these and what's best for you So before we go any further, do help the band if you can, you know, for free, you can, you can just go down and subscribe and uh, what, I saw somebody the other day, they said, um, smash the like button. Well, please smash our like button. Um, but there are other ways to help. You go in the description and there's a mailing list that's free to join. It takes 20 seconds and you join that. We'll tell you when the new record's coming out, which is soon. We've got some gigs coming in as well. So we'd love to share that with you. That's the biggest help. You can also do that buy us a coffee thing and that will help us keep, you know, affording to make these videos with our time. Um, it all really helps. So thank you, everybody. So we have quite a few comments. I'll just pick a few out. Colin Jones uh, said he was using Gibson finger picks, nylon, and he said, um, you used to use metal finger picks. Why? Well, let's answer that shortly. Um, Alberta ADV uh, has always picked with bare fingers. Started getting comfortable with finger picks. Can you do a video helping? Of course I can. And then John Astrum, uh, he had a few requests, but to, particularly about strings and setup and finger picks and stuff. And, and yeah, so I'll, I'll deal with some of John's requests in another video. But for now, let's first of all talk about my way into this in case that helps and let's just look at the sound differences so for me i was a bass player originally which meant that you know i had a certain technique for playing and and you know you know bass players you use your finger you use a plectrum So you get the idea that over decades I built up certain techniques. So when I came to start playing guitar, it was quite late on. I was about 24 or 25 and my ex was a jazz singer and she wanted to go busking. So um, I, I knew literally five or six chords and I had very bad, I could sort of finger pick badly or just strum with like literally my finger. And I said, oh, I'll, uh, Oh, I'll, you know, I've always loved all that bluesy old stuff. I'll, I'll learn some of that, you know. And, um, got to a point after a couple of months where I could at least back her on some songs. So we went to the city of York to go busking. And I remember um, some friends of mine at the time were playing folky bluesy stuff. And they were using finger picks. And I tried and I couldn't get on with it. And I couldn't understand why people would even use these. To me, it... it, it you felt alienated, you felt like you, you couldn't uh, make, you weren't connected to the guitar. This thumping thing made no sense whatsoever. Then we went busking and I came back that day like I need to start using finger picks. So what happened that day, it was a hot day, a sweaty day and I was on the street with my little old washburn parlor and I was like banging away trying to get like, you know, no noise out there and stuff and I, I wore my fingernails away, I, I wore the quick away, my fingers were ble literally bleeding. I was in agony. 
So that gave me the impetus to start moving forward with it. But let's just look at how you get an instrument to project with finger picks. Let's compare so you can hear the sound differences. So here's my trico. Um, let's just strum it. Now let's compare that without... I think that was loud. Oof, that's actually my ears have gone. Uh, let's just try that now with the fingers. Straight away it hurts. So it's not a particularly a scientific test, but what you should hear is that, you know, you're getting probably double to triple the volume straight away. So that's one of the benefits, you know, is just you can project. The instrument produces less low end, more middle, more volume. So you're just going to cut through, you know, you're going to produce a more cutting, clearer sound. Now, that's not to say that, you know, you have to use finger picks. Think about Mark Knopfler. Think about loads of players, Eric Clapton, that play, you know, Dobros or Resonators with the fingers. They get a great sound. My friend uh, Rich, um, Rich Sly Guitar on Instagram, is a monster player. He doesn't use them. He can do amazing things. But what you can do, if I show you this, is... You see that? You see that technique there? I hope you can see that. You get... There's a, there's a lack of friction from doing that. So you can do kind of very fast runs. You, you can sort of pluck things out that maybe you couldn't have done before that can be interesting, you know. Um. You'll hear I'm doing those fast runs in. You couldn't really do that with your, with your fingers, they'd probably get a bit stuck, or you certainly couldn't do it in a live situation or noisy situation, bring it out clearly. So that's good. You know, that, that, that song I started with, uh, the video, the um, Gold Guitar Stomp, that's one of ours, that relies on very fast picking. Again. Um, the finger picks really help. So one more thing before we kind of talk about the, uh, the actual physical nature of them. Um, in the Bob Brosman book, he talks about um, you, sh you must use finger picks on a resonator guitar. And I, you know, I disagree with that. Of course, that's not the case. But he makes a case that resonator guitars, by their nature, were designed for basically Hawaiian players that were using exactly this kind of setup. And they do produce more of a transient. So these things were designed with, with people producing notes that had this strong transient. Now a transient is the, the start of the note, the kind of very peak at the start of the note, and then it dies away. And with a finger pick, the transient is much more of a spike and less rounded. And that does seem to affect the cones. And I think the cones were designed, even the thickness of cones was designed to take that transient and produce a nice sound with it. He talks about, you know, you get rattles. And I've sometimes had rattles on my guitars if I'm just at home playing without finger picks. You know, um, you, something might rattle and then you put the finger picks on and it goes away. You know, which means you need to get your guitar sorted by a luthier or have a go yourself, if you know what you're doing. But yeah, there does seem to be an element of truth in the idea that these guitars do seem to respond very well to finger picks, which is why I think it's a subject for our channel. So if you're a non-resonator player, um, there's something worth bearing in mind, and that is a kind of, almost you might call it a hybrid approach. That is where you might only use a thumb pick and then use your bare fingers. I mean, I'm pretty certain that a lot of players back in the day used to do that. I think Blind Blake is a good example, and Blind Willie Johnson and people like that. So one of the questions was from Colin Jones, and he... Um, asked why I use the specific finger picks that I do. So I tend to use a, a Dunlop medium thumb pick, and I tend to use the, they're a national brand, not national as we know them, but they're an MP1, which are, um, I think they're a 0 0.20, 27, 0 0.28, 0 0.30, I can't remember now, but they're basically steel that are really, really, really hard like that. So the reasons why I came to use those are that I tried 
everything. And I mean everything. And basically, it's a practicality thing. I actually prefer the sound of the other ones, which I'll demonstrate in a second. But from a practical point of view, so what you'll see is that I am not the largest of men. So one of the things I found when I first started playing guitar, and it was a lot of it was on the street or in noisy bars, was that especially in the summer, you get sweaty, the finger picks would fly off, they'd ping off. Um, so I started off, you know, trying to use the, the plastic ones and they just did not stay on at all. You can, you can melt them, you can sort of put them in hot water and squeeze them. But what happens with your body heat in the summer, I would find that it just fling off. I could not get ones that were small enough that stayed on. And I tried to score the inside and, you know, with a knife to make them stay on. They wouldn't stay on. So eventually I went for the metal ones because the metal ones you can squeeze into shape and they have the little holes that mean that your kind of skin sticks through. Now, I have a full set in my music room here. I just have a full set of the thinner 0.18 ones. These go on and they stay on. I use the thicker ones for gigging, which I don't actually have a full set in here um, at the moment. Um, they stay on better. It does mean that sometimes at the end of a tour, if I've been away for two weeks, actually my skin's kind of hurting because you know, you, you're you full of adrenaline, you're pulling them off to play, play banjo. And sometimes, you know, they're so solid, those other ones, they do actually take your skin off, but they stay on and that's brilliant. So in terms of thumb picks, I use these Dunlop ones, these plastic ones, and there's, there's, there's two or three reasons why I've ended up at that. I started off using the metal ones, and sure enough, they stayed on. Um, but there was, yeah, there's a few things. So the first thing with the, the metal thumb, thumb pick is, the way this metal comes round, even if I tried to shape it, I would often end up with the... The pick would go past and then it would get stuck. And I found with the plastic Dunlops, they were sealed to the skin, that wouldn't happen. The other thing is, if you use a plastic thumb pick, you can basically use a plastic thumb pick like a normal plectrum. Because, you, you know, it goes on. But if you just hold it as if it was a plectrum, you can still use it like a normal flat pick. Because the metal ones... Gosh, this is nerdy. Because the metal ones have this kind of um, lip that comes across and it doesn't quite work the same. So there's one more reason why I went to the plastic instead of the metal. Um, what I found in those early days of playing guitar, especially on the street and being quite loud, was that when you use the metal ones, you, you as you're playing, you kind of play. You kind of cut, cut down and across the strings. And what I found was, um, I was, you know, sometimes after just two or three busking sessions, you go out for four or five hours, you, you know, so you go out three times, say in a week. And these wound strings were completely worn flat. And sometimes I even wore through the, uh, the windings and the strings would like unravel or go dead. Or they just sound dead and, and bad. So what I figured was that um, the plastic ones stayed on more. Some, for some reason. If you get the mediums on my thumb, they're just tight enough. So what you'll see is that the thumb pick wears away instead of the string. And that just means you're doing less string changes. So when you're busy, you're working, or you know, you're doing loads and loads and loads of gigs, I want to change strings as little as often because it takes quite a long time on these guitars. So yeah, um, it's a very practical thing. So let's compare sounds, and this is where I can ask for your help really. Uh, I want you to just to tell us which ones you think sound the best. Um, we'll start with plastic and we'll go to metal and we'll compare the thumb picks and the finger picks. Um, also, now's a good time. You know, there's probably a lot of beginners that are asking for this video. They're going to watch this video as the years go on. So do comment below if uh, you've got a particular set that you use that really work for you and why. Let's turn this video and the comments into a resource that really, really helps probably people that aren't even born yet <laughs> or future players that can one day find this video and learn what works for them. So first of all, we'll just literally, I'll, I'll play the different kinds and butt the videos up so you can hear. Just tell us what, which ones you like. So let's start with plastic. <laughs> Metal. 
So the surprising thing should probably be that the metal in many ways is, is warmer and fuller and basier and the plastic is a little bit more, has a warm mid-presence. So as I said earlier, the, the, the setup I use is for um, practical purposes and keeping the, 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 the buggers on. But actually, what I prefer the sound of, in an ideal world, I'd use plastic finger picks and a metal thumb pick. Let's just compare the thumb pick sounds. This is a good way to try. Um, metal thumb pick. Now I'm going to swap to the, um, the Dunlop plastic. I don't know if you can hear it on the thing. I am recording through a proper little microphone uh, into my phone, but the metal is louder and fuller. So, so far I've shared a lot of information and personal kind of experience, which I really do hope helps you all. Um, I quickly got the hang of these, and as I said, it, it it does two things. It, it makes the kind of music, that kind of um, rambunctious, fun, exciting, loud, ballsy kind of 20s and 30s blues and stuff, makes it possible. It, it's a big part of the sound. Um, it makes certain techniques possible. Um, how do you, uh, if you're getting into these things, how do you learn to fall in love with these things? Well, the first obvious thing is you just need to flip in well, do it. And if you can see that the benefit is that volume, that clarity, that ability to do faster things and throw them in, um, then that should be, you know, you know a, a, a prize worth the effort. Um, I used to find the finger picks OK. It was a thumb pick that I really struggled with. This idea of like, you know, going past the guitar string. So... You know, here's a chance to like combine two things. Uh, Jack did a video about practicing, quality practicing recently. It's on our, um, you know, video section in, in, in the profile thing. But um, he was talking about how do you get multiple things out of one hour of practice. So here's a, a way. Stick on a metronome. Um, just use a ticking clock in your, your room, whatever it might be. And just... You know, why not for five or ten minutes a day while no one's around? Just tick tock, tick tock, tick tock, tick tock, tick tock. Just practice your timing. Tick tock, tick tock. Do something really simple. And build that kind of ability just for that thumb to do what it needs to do. If you're playing anything like blues, you know, delta blues. Or kind of ragtime stuff. You're going to need that kind of independence from your thumb. So we're just looking at a simple chord thing. How about breaking it down? How about even just using an electric guitar and you can do this silently while no one's listening, no one's around late at night or whatever. Just start off by just doing the, th get the thumb independence. One, two, three, four. Can you see that? I hope. And then just add something with your fingers. Two, three, four. One and two, three, four. One and two. Your thumb and one finger. It's the kind of Reverend Gary Davis technique he just used to use one finger in his thumb. That actually reminds me, I didn't even explain why I've got three finger picks, most people use two. Well I started off using two finger picks, one thumb pick, and we were playing the kind of more some gypsy jazz tunes and I just found having a third one on that finger, I almost never use it for picking. But when I was doing chords, my fingers would get less stuck. I could just get around the fretboard easier. This kind of thing. Uh, yeah, this kind of thing.
you can just get around far easier with that third one without getting stuck. Anyway, I digress. Let's go back to that exercise. <laughs> just showing this is all live with a terrible production budget and uh, not very extensive notes or scripts. So where were we? Yeah. One, two, three, four, one and two and three and four and... And you could just try adding other things. One. One yana, two yana. Um, just get that independence. Get just get the muscle memory. If you, if you're learning this, this might be interesting. If you're not, I'm teaching my grandmother how to suck eggs. But um, muscle memory comes really from doing something a small amount. And sleeping on it um, probably probably a, a, a few days and then it consolidates at night when you're sleeping so just if you even did 10 or 15 minutes with that metronome after three four five days what you'll find is you'll be able to put your finger picks on get that volume get that clarity um, let me grab a slide and you'll be able to you know start to do you know stuff you want to do And then if you just keep going with it, what you'll find is that probably after sometimes two, three, four months, you'll be on stage or you'll be out gigging or you'll be at home or whatever. And suddenly, you know, all that other stuff will just start coming. And, you know, as you kind of get bored with something, you'll just start producing things you've heard other people do. And it just comes out, it just literally comes out of you. And you go, oh my goodness, I know what that is. That's that so-and-so lick. So there you go. It's uh, it's 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 a, it's, it's this is a very odd subject, but I'm hoping that you know this video has helped. If it has, great. Like and subscribe. Help the band. You know that's fantastic. We are the Washboard Resonators from Leeds, West Yorkshire. And um, in the meantime, we've got a lot of videos planned from people's messages and stuff. So do get in touch with anything you'd like to see, anything you'd like to know about. We would love to help you. Um, so thank you very much and bye-bye for now.